This is autoclaved aerated concrete. It's a material made out of concrete in the same way concrete is made, but it has aluminum powder added to it that creates little air bubbles as the concrete cures. And I was given some of this by a company called Aircon AAC in Florida, USA. It's typically used for building houses and other residential commercial structures the same way concrete block is used. I'd heard about it before but I'd never handled any. And so when I got this sample I decided to try making a piece of tooling out of it. Because it's concrete it has a relatively good coefficient of thermal expansion compared to a lot of other tooling materials. It machines pretty well here because it's mostly air. It makes a lot of nasty dust but it's not nasty in a super unhealthy way. It's nasty in a messy way. The problem is it's all full of little pores and these need to be sealed. So I took my sphere section that I'd machined and tried filling different quadrants of it with different materials. The first here is just an epoxy filler kind of like All Grip All Fair. It's made it's a total boat product made by Jamestown Distributors. Uh, cures at room temperature. It's just a highly filled epoxy and I skimmed that over everything trying to fill all the little pores. The pores are usually less than a millimeter across but enough that I'm thinking they will leave surface defects and potentially cause problems at the temperatures uh, with prepreg. And the second quadrant I just coated with epoxy and I put some peel ply over to keep it from running out of the little pores. And the third one I applied just a Bondo like vinyl ester putty. It's a real creamy Bondo uh, that sands really nicely that I like to use for things where temperature may be an issue and where sanding is uh, going to happen because it sands beautifully. And so there are the four options, the uncoated corner. So I gave it a sand up with some 120 grit sandpaper just trying to smooth things out. Now the problem here is that the uncoated area sands really easily and the coated areas, the sealed areas, sand the way you'd expect like the material they're sealed with. And so the three sealed areas went no problem. And I could totally imagine spraying primer on top of this and having it work really nicely. The unsealed area, I did a little digging in with sandpaper which by mistake. And I'm um, not sure how to avoid that uh, other than to seal the whole thing or not seal the whole thing. But because I wasn't into spraying primer and I wanted to get this done quick, I decided to put some adhesive Teflon over it and this is about a worst case scenario for adhesive Teflon because it'll do flat and it'll do one way curves but compound curves require a lot of struggle with wallpaper cuts and pulling it on the bias trying to keep it from wrinkling so I didn't make any attempt to do this beautifully I just wanted it to be done quickly without it being terrible and so I tried a few different things in different quadrants and ended up just placing and slicing strips for the second half and that part turned out better than anything else. The uncoated, unsealed area was really easy to cut in with the knife when do doing the, the wallpaper cuts, the double cuts on the Teflon and so I probably made a little mess there. It's quite chippy and it seems like it would break pretty easily. So then I grabbed some 
Hexcel prepreg that I had around. And this is a low temp system. I'm going to cure it around 100 C. And I'm just uh, stretching this over the top. Trying to make it decent. I'm not going to do any debulking. It's just going to be three plies put down. I'm using a heat gun there to stretch it out. It's one nice thing about the woven prepreg is that you can stretch it and form it really nicely. And um, you could probably get it to go halfway around a ball like this just by pulling and stretching. So there's the first layer and thrown on the second layer at 45 degrees to the first and then the fourth layer. I'll just go over and put some doublers in the corners. I made a mistake here. I didn't let the Teflon go over the edge down around and then I didn't trim the carbon back close enough so there's the final bit and some of that carbon hanging over the edge when I cooked it went down and bonded onto the um, autoclave aerated concrete that was exposed below the Teflon and so it was a little bit of a hassle to demold it but I just threw some peel ply on there and um, some perforated release film I only had this is grabbed some scrap and then put it down on one of my small carbon tables. These are nice, it's just an aluminum honeycomb pre preg table uh, with a honeycomb vented on the bottom and it's super stable and it conducts heat really well. So I put some breather underneath it so it wouldn't ruin the Teflon and um, bagged it up. I'm gonna cook this high and fast. I'm just gonna ramp it right to 100 and um, leave it there for a couple hours just to kind of push on it a little see what happens um, this is not a t stability test of the autoclave variety concrete it's more just a test of the surface and whether there are any problems it would be great to come back and do some tests of thermal expansion although the numbers I've seen suggest it's somewhere around concrete which is significantly better than most of the tooling boards available and so around that, you know, the CTE of steel or concrete or something like that. So when it was done, with a little bit of resin bleed. It looks good. Um, demolded it. And here I'm discovering that I've glued that part on a little more than I thought or hoped to. But everything looks good. The surface is nice. I can definitely see the quadrant of the sphere that... Um, I didn't coat it's lower and it's hard to tell whether that was because of the porosity of the material because of the shrinkage of the material or because I sanded it I think a lot of it is because in sanding the rest I mistakenly and there you can see that line um, right there where it uh, uh, to the right that the one we're looking at now that is the quadrant that was bare but the other three going around are the ones that were sealed. There doesn't seem to be any difference between the three sealing methods. It seems like sealing in any way matters uh, or not sealing. I'm imagining the surface is going to be pretty rough, um, even through the Teflon, where there was no sealing and, and um, filling the pores. But... Um, it looks pretty good from the outside. Here I'm going to do dodgy stuff with a chisel. So we'll fast forward through that. Hopefully no one's fingers are going to go missing. Um, it all turns out okay. Even though it looks right now like it's not going to. So I'll pry that up. And uh, get it loose. And here it comes. You can tell I'm about to get it. There it is. And the surface itself looks all right. I made sure to mark the outside of the peel ply on the part itself with the materials that the quadrants were filled with. Uh, you can see the inside lines there. And um, 
where the uncoated quadrant edges are. It's pretty pretty obvious um, that that was a different thing. The other three look pretty good. And um, again, it's the surface is pretty pretty ugly, but not as ugly as I thought it would be. And similar really to what you'd get with uncoated MDF with Teflon put over it. And um, I have a feeling this is much more thermally stable. And the interesting thing about autoclave aerated concrete that made it pretty compelling is the price. You can get a whole pallet of this for what a single block of epoxy tooling board costs. And I don't have any idea how to glue it together. And I'm not sure whether filling it and priming it is a viable long-term strategy for prepreg tooling. But what I wanted to explore with this video was the possibility that autoclaved aerated concrete could be a useful tooling material for low-cost prepreg parts, that it could have better thermal stability uh, and similar types of easy machining to some tooling boards and or MDF, and that the dust is not plastic, doesn't create a whole lot of microplastic nastiness to deal with, and their the health concerns are probably there, but not as significant as with a lot of other nasty tooling materials. So that was the experiment. I'm definitely going to try and get some more of this and do some further experimentation. Thank you for checking it out.